Hello everyone. Welcome to week four. I'm trying something different. I am trying a uh, video camera that is supposed to follow me and stay with me as I, uh, as I present information. And so I can hopefully zoom in and out. Uh, there we go. I can zoom in and out a little bit. And that way uh, I'm not stuck at a desk and you just have this sterile face looking back at you. And, and so uh, what I'm going to talk about is the big step going forward. So this past week, you talked about your experiences being a lay helper. You talked about your experiences uh, with uh, communicating with others. How do you give help? And this is, to me, the hardest thing, the hardest step for students regardless of counseling programs. So I've been involved with a, a counseling program with 300 students, 300 plus students at, at Adams State, and I've also been involved for many, many years here at Northwestern uh, with uh, helping students become counselors going through the process. <clears throat> and I can tell you without qualification, uh, when this class is taught at Adams State University, there are multiple boxes of Kleenex set up, ready to go. There are, uh, there is, there is a support group for students who can uh, go and talk to somebody and uh, and, and kind of just vent a little bit about their experiences. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, there, there are some slight nuances to how this class is taught, but regardless of how it's taught, it's encountered with very intense emotion from a lot of students. And so I, I give the, I, I, I'm giving this lecture now to, to help you, not to scare you, but to just help you have some context and, and frame of reference for when you when we, when we meet uh, next week and we go through the live practice, you know, the, it might be two weeks from when I'm recording this, but um, I, this is, so it, it, it can be a, a big affront to people when, uh, when they're called to question their own ways of communicating. And I would say I fit into this. I fit in. I fit into this mold. Um, I'm going to ask that each of you step out of your comfort zone, of your lay helper hat, of your education ed educator hat, of whatever role that you play in being with people. I'm going to ask that you step out and be in somewhat of a foreign and uncomfortable space. And it's going to be tough at first. And so this first weekend when we meet, it's practice. Um, you know, you're not getting graded on what you're doing because you don't know what you're doing. And many of you don't know exactly what it is that I'm asking you to do. And, and so it should become apparent, it should become apparent through the process of uh, what we should be doing. And so, uh, I've given this week, I've given uh, an excerpt from, from Carl Rogers, a, a very quick five minute video. Uh, there are other videos of, of Carl Rogers out there demonstrating counseling. Um, but the, the crux of this is to approach each person with transparency, with openness, with congruence. In other words, uh, this unconditional positive regard is something that you feel, and this empathy is something that you feel toward this person that, that's in front of you. And it's exhibited by the focus being on them. What I'm really going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask you to, this will be the whole course,
I'm going to ask you to create space. And what I mean by create space is space for that client, space for the other student that's with you to talk, to emote, whether that's anger, whether that's disgust, whether that's sadness. to express, to just be, and think and feel. So, I, I don't know that I've mentioned it before, the best counselors create first of all, are interested. <laughs> They're interested. What you'll struggle with, what you'll struggle with is your interest coming into this class is going to be on yourself because you're so self-conscious on, okay, what am I doing? Am I saying the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? And so your energy is focused inside, inside your head. That's called being in your head. And your focus, your attention, Oh, that doesn't show up at all. Focus on the client. Your interest, your underlying interest is on the client. In other words, knowing more about them. If you can create a space where you have this genuine interest and this genuine concern for their welfare, their well-being, you create a space for that client to project, project themselves into. Right now, I am projecting my thoughts in this camera to you. And, hopefully, when you get to session, you'll be like this camera, this device that's set up in front of me. In other words, it's taking me in. This camera is, is hopefully you'll have more emotions in this camera because it's kind of moving around. But this, this camera is taking me in and it's soaking up the emotion that I have and it's quiet. It's not saying anything back to me. It's, it's moving a little bit. It's giving me a little reading on the screen that says, hey, I'm paying attention to you. But it's not interrupting me. It's not really giving anything for me to think about. It's allowing me to express myself, emote, talk, be, and think and feel. And so, in a way, in a way, you're like, almost like a recording device in that your focus is on the person in front of you and your focus is not on what you're going to say. Your focus is not on um, if you're making mistakes, if you, if you messed up. And if your focus does go there, the better part of counseling, is I do the same thing, gets wrapped up and refocused on that client and, and what's going on with them. So when you use silence, that's what the topic of this week is, is creating space, space to project. When you create space through silence, it should be in the interest of being interested, of wanting to know, and allowing this person to think and feel, 
as you've watched this video, unless you paused it, you've had thoughts and feelings come up. I know you have because I'm challenging you. <clears throat> but yet, you haven't, unless you stop the video, you haven't had time to step back and reflect deeply on what that means for you. Because I kept talking. I talked about other things. When I pause, when counselors pause and don't fill the space, the silence with anything, you know what turns on? The client's thoughts, the client's feelings. Just like the video you watched with Carl Rogers, hopefully you watched it, the five minute one, where the guy says, I feel like I've got to produce something. That's good. Because eventually, the client will produce it. More often than not, beginning counselors feels like, feel like they have to carry the session. They have to produce something. Not in this context. Each one of you will have clients, student clients, colleagues, cohort members here that will be interested, and you'll be interested. The interest is more on learning about them. It's a tough process. You won't get there overnight. Don't be too hard on yourselves. Uh, I will critique you. Uh, you'll get critiqued from, from other folks as well. I'm going to have students, uh, practicum students from Stephen F. Austin who've had this class, uh, who you won't know, come and give you critique. I'm going to ask them to be uh, not harsh, but very genuine and honest. And if, if, they're re if it requires some critical feedback, that they give the critical feedback. It's not all just pats on the shoulder. Because you don't learn, you learn, yeah, okay, I did that good, but you don't learn your deficits. And each one of you, including myself, have deficits we can improve upon in becoming a counselor. And so as you approach next week, as you approach your demonstration, I pray that you open your mind to guidance and being okay with your